Welcome. Welcome to BFM 201 Ethanol Production. My name is Chuck Young and I'm the iGen Coordinator for Biofuels Manufacturing Technology. The purpose of this video is to share with you the lab safety and rules that we will be discussing during the lab session. If you have any questions after viewing this presentation, please bring them to the lab uh, session. Let's review the objectives. After this presentation, I would like you to know how to identify health and safety hazards in the lab, uh, health and safety rules you must follow for the lab safety, how best to protect yourself from hazardous exposures, and location of safety information and equipment in the lab. We need to be concerned about exposure to hazardous chemicals because exposure to hazardous chemicals can result in acute or chronic health issues. Acute uh, definition is, you know, something that occurs within hours or days of exposure. A chronic uh, occurs after exposure over many years, uh, which we won't uh, have in the lab. Uh, some exposure controls that protect individuals are things like uh, well, there's really three. Uh, engineering controls, this, these actually remove the hazard or separate it from the individual. These are things like uh, ventilation or safety cans for flammable storage. There's administrative controls. These are uh, procedures, uh, standard operating procedures, uh, procedures that limit contact with the hazard. And it might be even uh, like this safety training. This would be an administrative control. PPE, personal protective equipment, after, after the engineering and administrative, administrative controls are in place, PPE provides the last barrier between you and the hazard. At a minimum, uh, you should have chemical resistant gloves, splash proof goggles, uh, face shield in some cases, and an apron. you have uh, the right to know. Uh, this is called the right to know law. And so as a student, uh, all, all can, you, need, you have the right to know. So all containers are going to be labeled. The chemical name and the physical health hazards will be on there. The name and address of the manufacturer and the emergency contact numbers. And you'll learn where the location of the, MSD sheet, the MSDS sheets are and how to read them. The material safety data sheets uh, must have the following information on them. Uh, product information. This would be like a trade or a common name, so like uh, ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Hazardous ingredients of the product, including uh, exposure limits. Physical and chemical characteristics of the product, for example, how the chemical behaves at certain temperatures or what its boiling point is. Fire and explosion data, if it exists, and you know if there's a fire hazard, or if there is, how to proceed. Uh, reactivity tells us how the chemical may react with other substances. Health hazards explains short and long-term health effects and how the chemical enters the body. Precautions for safe handling and use gives helpful information in case of an emergency, like uh, how to clean up a spill. Control me measures will provide the proper PPE needed when working with the chemical. The lab will have an eyewash station. Uh, you should know where the nearest eyewash station is located. Uh, we'll have fire extinguishers available. Uh, so we'd like you to look uh, for the location of the fire extinguisher in the lab, uh, know where the nearest one is to your workstation, know how to operate the fire extinguisher. Some basic parts of a fire extinguisher are the safety pin, excuse me, the nozzle, and the pressure gauge, and the handle. Uh, this is a high pressure canister and inside there's a dry chemical, uh, possibly carbon dioxide or water. 
using a fire extinguisher we use what they call uh, the pass system so first you pull the pin uh, this also will break the tamper seal then you aim low pointing the extinguisher nozzle at the base of the fire then you squeeze the handle to release the extinguishing agent and sweep from side to side at the base of the fire until, until it appears to be out and then watch the area if it uh, reignites repeat steps two through four however and this is important if you have the slightest doubt about your ability to fight the fire evacuate immediately this is another example of the pass system pull the pin aim low squeeze the handle and sweep from side to side uh, we'll have a fire blanket so know where the location of the fire blanket is in the lab know how to get out of the lab uh, you know what are the means of egress look to see where the nearest exit is have a plan in case the exit is blocked and where's your second means of egress a little word on chemical storage uh, why why is it important uh, well it minimizes exposure uh, to corrosive and toxic chemicals uh, helps prevent fires and it eliminates incompatible chemicals coming into contact with one another uh, so this prevents uh, an emergency situation these are some storage issues that you should avoid avoid storing chemicals above eye level do not store incompatible chemicals together do not store chemicals near sources of heat or sunlight and avoid storing anything on the floor particularly uh, glass jars uh, we'll have a separate storage cabinet for acids we'll have a separate storage cabinets for bases and we'll have a separate storage cabinet for flammables well thank you uh, I've taken this information from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA again if you have any questions uh, please bring them to the lab and I look forward uh, to seeing you there thank you